Hey everyone, it's Jess from the Surviving Eating Disorders blog on Healthy Place. I just wanted to take some time today to share a couple of letters that I wrote to my body. One was written probably about mid-June last year um, when I was in treatment for the second time, and the other one was written uh, about the same time this year when I was in treatment for what I can only hope will be my last um, experience of inpatient and residential treatment. So I just wanted to share these with you because I feel like perhaps in my last post I made it sound like, oh my gosh, it's so easy to come to this point where you accept your body. It's so great. Um, and it's not that great at all. <laughs> like it's, it's a really um, tough process. So I wanted to share with you these letters just so you can see how much a difference one year can make. Um, so without further ado, I will begin with the letter that I wrote to my body last year. Dear body, you and I both know that I'm not particularly happy with you right now. Not physically, anyway. And I wish I could pin the blame on you somehow, but it's my fault for feeding you so freaking much. And I know it's a good thing to be nourished and healthy and fed regularly. But I'd be lying if you didn't, I didn't say you feel foreign to me right now. I feel like I'm living in someone else's body. The bones and angles I'd grown accustomed to aren't there anymore. Or they are, but they're under a new layer of fat, however healthy that may be. And sometimes I hate you, body, for not conforming to my ideal size and weight. I see girls all around me, so much thinner, who are done with weight restoration, or who never had to restore it all. Why can't you be built that way too, tiny and delicate, without these huge breasts and hips that mark me so clearly as a sexual being? And yeah, I get it, we're all sexual beings, but why must you be so obvious about it? That was a big part of this whole thing, you know. That you, at the weight you naturally settle at, are, cr are clearly a woman's body. You draw attention and looks from men and boys, and instead of figuring out how to navigate that, I starved you in hopes of avoiding that attention. And it worked for a while, my endogenous body unappealing to anyone, keeping me safe. But as soon as I start, started weight restoration, the first time, and the breast reappeared, so did the attention. So it's not your fault that I can't cope with that, and not really even your fault that you look the way you do. Genetics dealt me this hand, and plenty of women work hard and pay lots of money to have the hourglass curves that you do naturally. So really, it's not fair that I take out my fears on sex and intimacy in you. It's the sort of thing that ought to be worked out in therapy, not in the gym. Especially when a full-scale assault on your physical appearance also removes the less visible traits that I love about you. Our brain. It's finally working again, you know? I remember flying out here, trying to finish a crossword puzzle, giving up after four or five clues. Because I just couldn't think. Not about the crossword, anyway. I had plenty of brain power for obsessing over snacks and drinks on the plane and how much time I would have for working out when we finally got to the hotel. So for as much as I don't recognize you physically, mentally you are very much the same brain I remember. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the fact that there is some light in your eyes, the excitement and joy in rediscovering lost passions, the way your brain moves a million miles a minute and looking for the next great adventure, the way you smile and laugh and have jokes and may have hope. It's been way too long since I felt any sort of hope, so sure that things would end earlier rather than later. Even on medication, the brain still so dark and clouded, your being unable to metabolize the drugs because they came alone, without food or drink. So I'm left to wonder, body, if it's worth it. If having strength in my muscles again, neurons firing in my brain again, and happiness in my life again is worth it. Worth a trade-off for a life in a physical body that feels uncomfortable, that makes me want to peel my skin off. But I think it might be. I think that being able to think and feel and move without being faint is a far better deal than that perfect size two body. I feel far better than the secrets, lies, depression, and anxiety that accompanied that tiny frame. I guess what I'm saying, body, is that even if I don't love or even really like you right now, I can and will still respect you. I will still feed you regularly and exercise only in moderation. Because these things I really like and appreciate you are my way to have grand adventures in the world. Yes. So, I'm not entirely negative, but on the physical front, not really positive. <laughs> like, I hate you body, why do you have to be this way? So, this was written about the same time, uh, this same time, mid-June this year. Um, and just has a bit of a different sort of bent to it. Um, so this is this year's letter to my body. 
You know, Bonnie, if you'd asked me a week ago, I could have told you how horrible and disgusting you are, and how much you deserve to be punished. Good thing you didn't ask me last week. The thing is, I'm starting to gain a real appreciation for you. Am I thrilled about what I see in the mirror? Not usually, but I'm not utterly disgusted either. Honestly, you just don't matter, Bonnie. Or at least not in the way you used to. Weight, BMI, dress size, skinny? So what? Who really gives a damn about those things? I'm happier to know that my heart is beating, my lungs are converting oxygen to CO2, and the waffles that I ate this morning are fueling the very mind that is writing this letter to you. Am I going to be prancing around in a bikini anytime soon? Probably not. But you are what you are, and you are more than the sum of your parts. You are beyond valuable. You are the way I experience the world. You are the reason I can hear Shanna laugh, or read Harry Potter, or feel Jack and Charlie's sweet kisses on my cheeks. You are the transport for camping trips and long hikes, for days with friends and days in solitude and nature. I always get comments about how I'm such a hard worker. But holy crap, you've got me beat a million times over. Just on a cellular level, you're working all the time. It's been a while since high school biology, but you're doing a lot of stuff in those little cells of yours. Mine. And you can coordinate all those little cells and electrical signals into words on a page or the kick of a soccer ball. You always seemed so other. Not a part of me, but something separate. But it's beginning to feel a little more, like you're melting in, like we're melting into one. You are mine and I am yours. The deep crevice caused by the scale is beginning to close and we just are. I think I'm beginning to understand what our yoga therapist Leanne means when she says she doesn't ever think of body image, that she lives from the inside out and not the other way around. I'm beginning to forget the exterior and just enjoy what it feels like to be inside you. I love feeling you move and I marvel a bit at how much you can do, especially after years of abuse and or neglect. You're a trooper. We're a trooper. Go us. So, as you can tell, definitely um, more body acceptance this time. And just feeling generally more like, okay, like I can do this. This is not perfect. I'm not loving what I see in the mirror, but wow, like this, this body is great. This body is really helping me have all these experiences in the world. Um, and just, I have a real appreciation for that now that I didn't um, last year. <laughs> you know, like it was great that my brain was working, but everything else, forget it. So I just wanted to encourage you guys that it is possible to get to a point where you accept your body and feel okay about it. Um, and there's there's a difference between accepting your body and loving your body. I'm I'm not gonna say I love my body. I'm, you know, I'm not there yet. I don't know if any person in the world is like, I love my body all the time. Um, but I have accepted it and I'm not, not concerned so much about what it looks like now. I just, it is, I am. So what, <laughs> you know? Um, so I would encourage you all maybe to write letters to your body and just kind of let your feelings out there. I mean, be honest. I was totally honest in my, my uh, letter last year. Just about like, I am really not pleased with you physically. <laughs> you are really gross. Um, but I think that honesty is sometimes what it takes. You know, there's a whole process to come to acceptance. And I think that's, you know, important that you go through all of that you go through the anger that your body's not what, what it used to be and the sadness that you can't have the body you want. And, and finally you just kind of land on acceptance and go, okay, this is what it is. And I'm gonna, gonna deal with it. Um, so I hope you guys are having a great week and that you'll take the time to write a letter to your body. I'd love to hear how that goes for you. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys keep hanging in there and keep fighting the good fight. Bye.